my name is Ali Carter. I am the founder of Media UK and I wanted to chat to you today about what the impact of falling property prices in England and Wales could have on your divorce or separation. So the first thing is, are property prices falling? I am no expert on the property uh, market at all, I promise you, but I do monitor it because it is very closely linked to, uh, to divorces. People tend to sort out their divorce and their finances when they're selling their property. So I, in my, in my amateur world, I did a search uh, locally on Rightmove uh, of 150 properties. Uh, none of them, not one of those 150, had increased in price in the last six months. Uh, and I would say about half of them had reduced in price. Some by sort of, you know, a few percent, £25,000 here and there. Others, £150,000 plus. So uh, it looks like that property prices are falling. And this is, of course, uh, to do with uh, the cost of living crisis. People are not, not having as much money, but also with mortgage rates uh, going up or people coming off low fixed rate mortgages that are ending, they've just got less money to spend. And that's obviously impacting on the market as well. So my advice to you is if you are looking to sell or looking to buy is to follow the experts, check out uh, the properties on Rightmove and Zoopla and, uh, and see what's happening there yourselves rather than just taking my word for it. But we're going to assume that property prices are coming down as most experts agree that is the case. What impact does that have on you when you're going through a divorce or separation? It kind of depends, is the short answer. It depends on what you're doing with the house. So if you are looking to sell the house, nice and simple, you've agreed a 50-50 split, you're both going to sell a your four bedroom house, you're gonna buy a two bedroomed property each. It shouldn't make a lot of difference because you've agreed a 50-50, if you sell it for 500, you sell it for 450, you're still gonna get a half share of whatever's left in the bank and if a property you're buying is falling in price as well, it should have a lower impact on that. Just be careful because anecdotally, houses that are sort of in the higher values are reducing in price more because more people are looking to downgrade because there's less money. So you just want to make sure that, you know, if your four bedroom house is reduced by 20%, it doesn't necessarily mean that a two bedroom property is also reduced by 20%. So it can impact you on there. But in that scenario, minimal impact. The scenario where you are looking to offset, uh, this is where one of you is keeping the house and the other maybe keeping a pension fund or other investments or savings, then it does have an impact. Because if you've agreed at the outset that uh, one of you has got an 800,000 pound pension, the other has got an 800,000 pound house, that seems fair. If that house is now worth £600,000 and your pension might have gone up 50 k in the meantime, a court would look at that and say, well, hold on, one of you is getting 600 one of you is getting 850 We need to, uh, to look at closely into why this is a fair agreement. So that's where you do need to really consider the valuation of a property. What can you do in this scenario? The best things you can do, act quickly, just, just Get to the agreement fairly but quickly because the quicker you get to an agreement, the quicker you have it made legally binding, the quicker you move on with your lives. It doesn't matter what's happening with the property market then, you get to move on with your life. The other part is what you don't want to have to do is keep every three to six months updating your financials and then renegotiating your agreement. So a property price now in January if you weren't to actually get that to court till December, you would have to update those finances. You fill out a thing called a D81 if you want to get a, a financial consent order that makes your agreement legally binding. The D81 figure has to be up to date. And if you know that your house was worth 800,000 pounds at the start of the year, but is now only worth 600,000, you have to put 600,000 pounds in because it's a legal form, you're signing it to say it's correct, you don't want to be committing contempt to court and all that malarkey. So speed is important in a falling property market. Uh, the other thing to consider 
is if you're looking at remortgaging a house or you're looking at getting a mortgage on a, on a property, in a falling market, your loan to value, the amount of money you're borrowing against the value of the house, that may increase. So if you're borrowing £250,000, your house is worth £300,000, that's fine, it's all been agreed on that. If they go to value it, the mortgage company, and actually they say the house is only worth 260000 they're less likely to offer you that same mortgage amount or the same rate. So it can impact you there as well. What are the advantages of a falling property market? Well, hopefully you're going to be facing uh, the same, well, not hopefully, but you're going to be facing the same problem that virtually everyone who goes through a divorce has to do. How are we going to fund two properties when beforehand we were funding just the ones? And in a falling market, you're hoping that uh, you're going to have more choice, hopefully, because there's less competition, because prices are coming down. And also, what you're hoping is that the places you're buying, you're going to be able to pick up some bargains and you can go in with some uh, cheeky offers there as well. Uh, so in a falling market, speed. Make sure you're asking your estate agent. Get some really good estate agents in. Make sure you're asking for a realistic valuation, not a let's shove this on the market of this and see what happens. Get a realistic valuation from them. If you are selling your house, set it at a realistic price uh, because the last thing you want to do is put it on there, no interest for six months. Meanwhile, the whole market is, uh, is falling down and you end up selling it below what you could have got. I hope that helps. Uh, I hope that helps explain what to do. We are, as I record this video, in February 2024 in what looks like a falling property market. But whatever you do, just remember, just focus on the end result. You want to get to an agreement. You want to make sure your needs are prioritised and you want to just move on with your lives. And I really do hope that you can do that. Many thanks. Thank you.